In the year 8000 BC, music sounded something like this. Is for the principal ingredient. Just any afternoon at five. We'll be so glad we're both alive. Then maybe fortune will complete the plan that all began with cocktails for two. No! recorded cocktails for two on the great big transcriptions which were not sold to the public and then he went overseas with the USO and while he was overseas the thing hit it became a smash but there was no records everybody was ordering millions and millions of orders and no records and he didn't come back for like two months and then he, when he came back I was willing then he went in and recorded it and uh, got it out and it was still a hit I guess I was around five or six years old and we were driving to my grandparents house just my dad and I all of a sudden, people would start honking at him and waving and leaning out of their cars and yelling his name, hi, Spike, and he'd wave back and he'd say, hi, how are you? Nice to see you, as though he knew them quite well. And finally, I said to him, Daddy, who are all these people? And he said to me, how do I know? I've never seen him before in my life. People even to this day will come up and say, uh, Spike drank also. Is that what he died from drinking? Uh, you know, I said, geez, he didn't drink, drink for 15 years before he died. He stopped probably the second or third big year of his career. In the beginning, I think he had to, to get through. He had so many things on him. He became such a fast success. He took a nurse along and giving him shots every hour. And he quit just like that. And he never drank again. But when Spike stopped drinking instantly, the whole band became a different band. Uh, everybody stopped drinking because he stopped drinking. Clank, clank, no more to drink. I had a cellar full, but now it's gone. Clank, clank, the glasses clink. Like the anvil chorus and my head is splitting. Breaky, busty, oh brother. Oh, how, what do I do now? Pink elephants are running after me. Though that stuff was smooth as silk, from now on I'll stick to milk. Nothing else to drink for me. Any of the bits that he ever created or ever did, uh, you could bring your family or children. Everything had to be clean and up above board. He never did anything like they do now. <laughs> well, Spike uh, always wanted to give you a thrill a second. A thrill a minute wasn't enough for him. And as soon as he got out where people could see him, he realized that the, the records were so colorful, people wanted to see something that heightened the experience of just hearing the records. He basically knew that he could take it one step further than the audience or anybody ever intended it to go. And he decided that one day he wanted to have a review, a two and a half hour show, and do, it, do one night as throughout the United States. And he was one of the first ones, I believe, that started concerts, so to speak.
Every night, every place we went, we, uh, we were sold out. The stage shows were um, an extravaganza, a real spectacle. They were innovative and very, very exciting, very, very colorful. It was fast, it was furious, and it was fabulous. Uh, so many things went on, uh, and, and the audience was just, you know, amazed. It was actually all planned. It was all written musically. He had an unbelievably sharp mind, a great ability to organize. He traveled with a private train where all the other bands had to get up every morning, catch a bus, and, uh, and, uh, and get lose sleep all the time. And when we'd get off the train in all these small towns, you'd wonder where the people were coming from. There were tiny towns. And in the evening, oh, they came out of the woodwork. I mean, thousands of people. And everybody followed that pattern from them on after Spike shows. He set the whole pattern of doing one-nighters and touring with, with a big show. That's where the boys taught me how to play poker. That's how I learned to play gin rummy. I learned all, all the bad things. It's quarter to three. There's no one in the place except...